Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang loud, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. And it looks like Amy Winston is trying to make some noise here. But... All right, Reinhardt back on point, gets his ult, knocks him down. Here we go. Here by in. Shadow of Four. What a triple kill. And they keep it going. Oh, well, well. All left is our healer and our tank. Yep. Which, to their credit, doing a pretty good job of holding off this onslaught. Woohoo! Oh, got the ball. Nice. All right. He's oh, on to the payload for there. overtime. Here we go, folks. Can he maintain for a tank to get through? And he is able to. He's gonna have to. Here we go, overtime. Oh. They gotta push through. Oh. Gotta get rid of the defenders Another quick percent. enough. Raptor Claw really going nuts here with the triple kill. Not bad. Get some, Diva. Oh, and Shadow with the kill. All right. Here we go. Come on, guys. Can I get that? That tracer is giving him so much trouble. That tracer's tricky. That teleport ability lets her stay on point for a while. Overtime is gone. Good job, guys. Welcome in, folks. Thanks so much for being with us here for Faulkner Esports production of Overwatch. Tonight's game is going to be Faulkner versus the University of Arkansas Fayetteville Hogs. I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt. And I'm Connor Hagan. And we're going to be bringing you all of the commentary and the action for tonight's game. We've got a SEC matchup tonight, so it should be a lot of fun seeing how the guys handle that. And it looks like the lobby's already created and the teams are just about ready to go. So since we're running uh, low on time, let's go ahead and jump directly into the player intros. On damage, the captain, Viva Caligula, Trey Parker. Playing damage, the lieutenant, IND Ian McFarland. Support Shadow 4 Jesse Clark. Playing support Shiaki Peyton Provo. The tank, good old Tom, Tom Redwell. All right, and so you can see the guys are in there getting ready, and they should be underway here in just a second. It looks like both teams are done with warm-ups and in the lobby and ready to go. Uh, you can see Ian over there on the other side communicating with Trey, trying to get all the logistics done. And Chiaki and Tom just kind of hanging back, letting things sort of unfold in front of them. On damage, the captain. Don't know why that happened, but there we go. <laughs> uh <laughs> Mike having some fun over there. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and underneath, of course, the Registrar USA High Res Arena sign. You can see Trey and Jesse getting ready. Uh, Jesse, um, over there on the the far side, has his screen brightness turned all the way up. 
uh, to the point to where he's basically his goal is to be translucent on screen. We appreciate it's that. Almost exactly what how it looks. Yeah, it is. he's basically see through at this point. Uh, yeah, but Faulkner versus Arkansas tonight going to be a good matchup. Now, uh, Faulkner is in a bit of a pickle when it comes to their playoff uh, prospects. And they are currently ranked seventh, which means that they would need to win both of their next two games to secure a playoff spot. But, you know, definitely something that they can do playing Arkansas tonight. If they can win this win, that will really help them jump in the, the ranking since Arkansas is currently ranked second and has only lost one game in the conference play so far. So if they can win it tonight, they will be in a good way. So we've entered a team fight and uh, two teammates have, are, have gone critical already. Yep. Just wasn't able to get the healing off there in time. Yeah, I and D going down. They're getting kind of pushed back here. You notice that they're having to move away from point. And Arkansas has taken point for the time being. And it looks like that's going to be several casualties here. And Ian decides to retreat. Which was the smartest decision. Oh, for uh, sure. It's better to just back off while you still have health and die and have that respawn time. Right. So the been pushed back before, kind of getting bullied by Arkansas. Now you're going to see them try to make some headway. And it looks like we have an Ana ult hanging out in the background. Let's see if they're able to do anything with it. In comes Tom with the monkey. Oh, does some major damage. Trying to get that support. And Shadow and Tom and Ian all able to take down Oh, and we get another one? All right, so they have taken point this time. And they were able to get a team wipe from it, so that's really good. Yep. That'll give us a couple extra seconds to build up some uh, points. Right. Able to increase our position so that we have less time we have to hold it when they get back. Yep. All right, and they've come in with a Sigma. Interesting choice for this map. Really, it's not an awful pick because oh, not at all. Uh, the barriers on the point uh, move in and out of, oh no, I'd say existence. You don't get protection at certain points in the map, so Sigma is, and being able to control his force field, even though it's not a great force field, it's very easy to take down. Um, you can see there that Ian was bound and determined to take down that Baptiste, which makes sense because he had been a... a Really, he was the major force, the reason that we were going down in that last round. So Ian kind of targeting him, knocking him off, hoping that when the team does come back, he's not in a good position to defend. Yeah. I do like seeing Tom back on tank playing Monkey. I think that that's uh, an interesting sort of dive comp they've got going. So they're able to take down the Cassidy. Yep. It's go time. Oh, and it looks like we're going to take point. And they take down Hologram. Unfortunately, that Soldier 76 ult does get us. Ooh. Down goes so Tom starts ulting. He's able to get one kill. Can he get another? No, not off of his ult. Yeah, it comes close, but Angry Monkey only gets one. So that's Sigma ult. Oh, wow. Best round lost. You know, props to a impressive last stand there 
by Tom, he was able to hold them off significantly longer than anybody else. And so that's kind of a testament to how good he had been doing that round. But unfortunately, it ultimately comes up a little bit short. Yeah. Stay in sight, and I'll keep you safe. This is obviously a really good team, though. Oh, looks like we got a little break in the action. Not sure exactly what's going on. Uh, looks like they may be experiencing some issues with Tom's screen. Hopefully that is something they can resolve pretty quickly. Uh, I can't tell if his PC itself went down or it was just his screen. But it looks like they are having some technical issues. Which... Here's some inside information that I happen to know about that particular PC. If you jostle it real hard, it will go go out. And so what may have happened is after getting killed in that last match, you may have like pounded the desk or something. And if that happened, that may have shut the whole thing down. I've had that yeah. happen to me on that PC before. So that may be what happened. I hope that's not the case. Uh, but if so... We will have a brief pause, and we'll get back to the action here in a second. Usually the other teams are pretty understanding about this kind of thing, so hopefully they're not, uh, they're not too overbearing about it. And, you know, it should start up here in just a second. So, And if all else fails, it can always just switch PCs. Yeah. I know that would be a hassle, but it would be something that they could, uh, they could consider at the very least. But... And I think that's exactly what they're going to do. They're, they're <clears> he just unplugged his controller and he's moving it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, in that case, why don't we, while we're waiting on Tom to get set back up, let's go ahead and look over some of the patch notes that Overwatch came out with this week. So just a sort of a quick overview of some of the things that have been changed. So a couple things. First of all, they have updated the projectile size. So global projectile size modifier for travel time projectiles with a speed greater than 50 meters per second reduced from 0 0.1 to 0 0.075 meters. So that's a pretty drastic decrease. And part of the reason for that is you were having several videos circulating online where people would be missing by very wide margins on players from like a long distance away and it was still hitting them. Yeah. And so part of the reason for that or part of the the results of that it seems like uh blizzard understood that that was a problem and because of that they've decreased the modifier so that was is going to result in a lot less sniper kills a lot less long distance shots that are hitting that kind of thing uh looks like a heal reduction applied by the damage roll passive is lowered from 20 percent to 15 percent so uh, if you're, I think what that's saying is if you're being damaged, then you're taking a 15% hit to however much you're being healed. Yeah, as opposed that's to exactly 20. what it is. Yeah. And it's not just for supports, um, playing Reaper. He also, uh, his he self healing decreases significantly. Mm -hmm. So it's passives as well. Mm hmm. Okay, other hero updates. It says, added a new UI element above player's first-person health bar to show all active healing status effects. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Just a little extra information for you while you're playing. It also shows up in your um, HUD in the bottom left corner of the screen, so you can see if you're anti if you're uh, virused. Right. So for some of the character-specific patches, Doomfist, his Meteor Strike has a minimum damage increase from 15 to 50, which is not massive, but it's a, it's a pretty substantial increase. Yeah, it definitely helps him out a lot, because if he doesn't hit a strong Meteor Strike and it only does 15, that's not much for an ult. Yeah, and that's the thing. Meteor Strike already has some risk associated with it, so that, that's a much nicer reward. Yes. Or Meteor Strike when it hits. Uh, now, I, I'm never confident in pronouncing this guy's name, but Malga? Malga. Malga, okay. Yeah, for some reason, I'm always self-conscious about it. I think I mispronounced it the first several times I tried it, and because of that, now I'm, I'm worried about it. Mike called it Mauga when he first was announced, and we call well, him that from time to time. Well, he also thinks that Genji from Shrek that, is a character <laughs> that's very in true. Overwatch. And he calls Busan Bussin. Yeah. Not the shuriken! Not my gumdrop shuriken! <laughs> 
anyway uh, so uh so malga his modifications are the overrun his stomp damage is increased from 45 to 60 not a big change but a little buff and then uh cardiac overdrive duration is reduced from five to four seconds cooldown reduced from 12 to 10 and it now fills his passive over health by 100 so nice little addition for somebody that is as tanky as him Arissa. Her Terra Surge, the charge rate for the first 2.5 seconds is increased by 25%, which is nice. You know, I think the devs really like Arissa, and they're wanting to make sure she stays relevant in the meta, and she has fallen off of the meta a little bit yeah. after that last patch, so I think they're trying to, to rejigger that just slightly. Uh, Ramatra, his Ravenous Vortex, total damage increased from 45 to 70, and his cooldown decreased from 12 to 11 seconds. Again, that's kind of fiddling around the edges, but if they think it'll help, I guess, whatever. Uh, 11 seconds. It's weird, though, it being an odd number. Yeah. But <clears throat> I don't know. I guess they probably tested a lot of different ones, and they felt that that was a good. All right, so we are back to the action, but before we do, I got to talk about this. Reinhardt, my man Reinhardt. <laughs> he had his armor increased from 75 to 30, and his fire strike damage has increased from 100 to 120. Yeah. So. I when I first heard that I said no this is terrible Bastion can't melt him anymore. Uh -huh. Bastion still doesn't struggle to melt him in the sliders. Nope. Bastion sucks. <laughs> anyway. So it looks like Falconer pushed right in and the other team is playing off on the left. Yeah, they're they're kind of playing back a little bit so Falconer looks like going to take control first although well that's I say that. Right as I said that, it started going the other direction. Yep. Yeah, we really just swapped uh, places right there. Yeah, it's crazy how that happens. I will say, based on the last round, this, this team excels at creating space where it doesn't seem like there should be any. And Faulkner has point again, starting to build some of that and it looks like we're in a good position to do that all right and bastion takes down sloth and oh, baptiste and bastion yeah sorry you just talked about bastion my brain was still on that and uh it looks like that's gonna be a team well. wipe so good for them Over here. Over there. now just waiting for the attack Interesting player choice for Ian, but it seems to be working so far, so I'm not complaining. She um, is another character that recently got a buff, and according to him, she really needed it. Yep, and he gets... Oh, no, that's the immortality field. Uh, yeah, but... So, Arkansas a double baptiste wall right there. Yep. So oh, Tom was man. intent on getting that soldier, but he was just wasn't able to. That wasn't my enemies attacking the objective. Did the best he could, but now Faulkner just a little bit staggered. Yeah. Fortunately, we we have almost seventy percent, so I think that we we certainly have enough time, and I think we can take the point back before they reach, uh, before they match us. Yeah, probably so. So it looks like they're going to try to slip in. <laughs> and so Kyriol. Kyriol and uh, Ramatra ult. The opposing Ramatra ult. And I think that's Symmetra ult as well. Yeah, they are able to take down the tank, which is really nice for us. And down goes Peyton's their... able to take out their soldier. Yeah, soldier is down. Now you see me? All right. Faulkner may be able to stay on point long enough, but it's going to be close. Oh, look, he just started firing before he even saw anybody. Tom was like, I know they're coming through here. I might as well just start firing. If I was in his position, I would have thrown out one of his, um, 
circles. I forget what that one's called. Ravenous or soul. Ravenous vortex. Yeah, vortex. I would have thrown that out to hold them back for just a moment. Yep, and Punchy Ramatra takes center stage, holding his own, and we are in overtime. Come on, guys, you can do this. Oh, and a couple of kills, but unfortunately they're outweighed by a team wipe. And that means that Arkansas is going to take over. So if Faulkner can get possession back, that means we will probably win this. I think that we just used all of our ults, though, so this will be a bit hard to push in without any. Yep. Yeah, no, no ults for us. But it also, I don't know, I couldn't tell if they had any ults or not. I saw two on the other side. All right, so going to make an approach. Going to have to do it quickly. Don't have too much time left. Somebody's going to have to touch points. All right, and Ramatra versus Ramatra. Come on, Tommy. Oh, this is going to be close. All right, and we are in overtime. Both teams at 99. This is for all the marbles. And he goes down. And that's and going to be a team wide. kill. Yep. That's going to be a round win for, for Arkansas. Really unfortunate that it ended that way. You hate to see it, but... Faulkner played a very good round, just this team kind of outmatched them there. That seemed very doable, though. I I think that we can that we can take this game. I agree. We showed that uh, we know what we're doing, that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. I mean, we literally brought that last one down to a 99 versus 99 and uh, had overtime. They took it, got it to 99, and so we were actually the team that got there first, so yeah. it was our lead to lose. Unfortunately, though, there at the tail end, uh, what they did was Tom made a valiant effort, but after they started taking out our back lines, there was just nothing that we could do because mm -hmm. uh, instead of going for Tom directly, they kind of folded around and started taking out their supports. And then once they fell, there was just was not much we could do. So tough start for the Eagles starting out with a 1-0 deficit. Yep. But they can definitely come back from this one. And it would be really nice if we could um, be able to take round two. Uh, Connor and I have talked about this before in games that, uh, well, actually, have you done an Overwatch game before? No, this is my first. That's what I thought. I know you had done pr uh, production for Overwatch, but mm -hmm. you've never done commentary for Overwatch. So one of the things that I have talked about a lot, and you've probably noticed as well with the Overwatch team, is they tend to do better with other game formats. So... They don't do great with point control. They tend to do better with escort missions, and oddly enough, Flashpoint, which was by far our weakest game mode earlier in the season, has become our stronger one. Mm -hmm. We t we tend to do better on those. And so uh, that is difficult when you start out with the game mode you're the least good with, but if Faulkner could theoretically just win the next three, and then they they wouldn't have to win another control point again. Yeah. So. I mean, they would have that little mini one at the beginning of the escort mission, but other than that... But that's really nothing. No, not compared to... It's one team wipe, and then you take the point. That's all it is. Exactly. So, hopefully they can do that. We will see. It looks like they're getting that lobby set up right now and are about to enter some gameplay. So, we'll get to them in just a second. And you can see Tom has moved. He's between Trey and Jesse over there, playing on another PC. Very intent. And Shaggy always makes me laugh. Peyton's just kind of like hunkers down into her chair. Yeah. But, I mean, her play style works, so it does. I'm not going to complain about it. And there we go. Vishka's actions here were disappointing. I still need answers for them. Ready to heal some wounds? Physical or emotional? 
<laughs> if you can handle both, go for it. All right, so not much has changed on the team comp despite this being a escort mission. It looks like they've added a May. But the truth is, for this particular one, it is essentially, at least for the first point, a point control, and then they move into escort. So I can see why you wouldn't see much difference on the team comp here. Yeah. So they jumped off of Ramatra and have gone to Sigma. And they're. Oh, and down it goes. Wow. So Ian's able to Symmetra dip them. Yeah, and Faulkner has really kind of made short work of the initial wave, but if they don't take down this tank quickly, his reinforcements will come back. Oh, so Trey goes down, yep. and then Ian. And then Ian. Chiaki tries to hold out as long as she can, but an unprotected support like that just can't can't mono a mono a whole team that way. No. But we got some ult charge off of that team fight, so in this next one, maybe we can get some full ults off and take that point. Let's hope so. struggling a little bit. It looks like yeah. we're taking the point now. Yep. Alright, we have mail. Fortunately, it doesn't get anybody. Nope. Your case is definitely urgent. And we're down to two minutes on the clock. What's that? All right, gonna push from so behind. So we're able to get here. one pick off on their Symmetra. Yep. So that Zen charged up his orbs to try and take out the May as soon as she broke out of ice. But I think uh, Trey broke out just a moment before the Zen expected. And so he was able to get the kill off on him and take him by surprise. Yep, and there it is. Payload has unlocked. They're able to destroy the opposing Symmetra's portal to make sure they don't have anybody sneaky coming through. So not a whole lot of kills being made. Really on either side. Yeah. Well, I say that. You gotta remember the commentator's curse. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, May just trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Zenyatta and just not working out well. Yeah. And then... Chiaki falls to their Kiriko as well. You're completely healed. Alright, kind of get stuck in this little corner here. You're going to pop window. I'm 
And he's able to destroy portal. Oh, and actually Just Baptiste gets like... killed. And they've walled off uh, Sigma and they take him out. Yeah, Faulkner in a good position right now. Only a minute 17 left, but looks like they're going to easily make the next checkpoint. So they're and able to cap off there and get a few extra minutes on that clock. Yep. So now it's back up to 230. Oh, and takes down Deadly Pants. Nice. Now, they are kind of vulnerable here with no tank, but Tom should be back any second now. And Ramatra sneaks in. That Sigma ult. So Tom tried to mirror ult and right. went down, unfortunately. There we go. So Tom goes down there. Oh no. Yeah, and after Tom goes down, pretty much everybody else followed. So I'm thinking the uh, plan here should be get on the point, use Kirill to get a team wipe, and try and push that all the way as far as you can. And if you have to, use Baptiste to push in. Yeah, now the problem is the further, the closer they get to the end, the closer they get to enemy spawn. That's true. But. Even so, if they can carry ult and maybe even just take a few and then stagger some deaths, yeah. they might be in a really good position here to be able to do that, even with the limited time they have. They're going to have to jump on point pretty soon, though. Yep, and there goes carry ult. The Baptiste, Kirill, unfortunately, they're just picking our team down. Yep, systematically taking them down. Only have one second left. We're in Trey overtime. On it. Trey was... And Sigma ult's on point. Oh, who's on it? Looks I was like about to say... Thomas who? jumped on there with Doomfist. <laughs> Making one last stand. Oh, man. And Overwatch. Oh, and someone does else gets on. So Is that Ian? Ian's on there with Tracer. He's gonna. I think he's gonna flash in and out of there. Ian just buying time by the skin of his teeth. That's all you really can do. Man, the fact that he's still alive is incredible. Oh, uh, he wow. couldn't get his charge back just no. in time. But man, that was fun watching him go back and forth. And here's the thing. Yes, it is a shame that we weren't able to complete it, but we got really far. And to win this round, you don't have to actually get to no, the end. You, you just, just have, have to get, get further, further than, than the other team. team. So Faulkner still in a good position that all they have to do is hold them off from what? That was about 75% of the way there, I would say. Yeah, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. And we did get two points off of it. So if Faulkner can just hold them back to further back than they got, I mean, that was actually a really productive round. Um, I've seen us get significantly less ground in payload escort missions before. So this is actually not at all a bad showing no, to start no. out. This looks like a team that gets into trouble. Good thing I came along. Hmm? Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Well. It is a pretty good face. I just thought it was funny that Sigma is armored. 
from the neck down except for except his feet. Except for his feet, yeah. Apparently that's like the one part of his body he doesn't mind if it gets shot. I don't know. <laughs> like, I get that he doesn't have to have shoes because he doesn't ever touch the ground, but yeah. I would just want some armor on it just so no one, like, blows my foot off. Yeah, and also I imagine you get cold feet all the time. Maybe so. I mean, I don't know about you, but if my feet get cold, the rest of my body is cold. Barrier initialized. So I think they're going to run the exact same team composition, except for Sigma, uh, as we did in the last one. Looks like it. And it's been funny that we have dueling Sigmas in the same way that we had dueling or mantras earlier. Yeah. So we take their barrier down. And kind of got him pinned down into a tight space here with Maywall and everything else that's going on. Ooh. That was very scary. Yeah. All right. Ian has decided to switch to Widow. Oh, and May goes down. So we'll see what he can do with that. Man gets eliminated almost immediately. I was really hoping he could get at least one or two kills without being noticed, but yeah, uh, uh, I think they were watching for him. I think that's exactly what happened. He may switch from Widow after that. Uh, it sounds like he just swapped to Ash. Okay. So, a different kind of sniper. Yeah. Yeah, so now the strategy changes quite a bit. Now instead of keeping them off of that one very specific spot, they've changed to try to catch them in certain spots that are the easiest to defend. Yeah. And this is one of the places where Ash really excels. I say that as Ash does go down, but is able to get... He was able to take out the Symmetra. Right. Ooh, and Baptiste goes down. And Chiaki and Tom, so that's going to be a team wipe. And now the payload able to move forward unimpeded. And I got to say, with 5 minutes, 17 seconds to go, they do not have much left to push. Faulkner's really going to have to make a, a mighty stand here. I think he was trying to put Bubble on um, Ash, and he just wasn't able to. I was wondering about that. Well, that sounds like Baptiste ult. That's Sigma ult. So I think this is going to take Tom out, yeah. Yep. Come on, guys. Gotta hurry. Yeah, somebody's got to stop he's, the... He's going to have to... Th yeah, I was going to say, he's going to have to throw Bob in there and try and hold him back, but... No, not going to work. Arkansas able to push payload just a little bit further than Faulkner. And again, Soldier 76 played by Hologram with play of the game. You can see why right here. I had a feeling this was going to be play of the game. Not fancy, just like standard yeah. run in, take care of business. But yeah, apparently, even though Faulkner does tend to do really well with escort rounds, and you can see that in there, boy, uh, Arkansas really moved that payload quickly, and that was impressive, an impressive showing by them. Hopefully, we're able to stave it off, because that was two rounds, which means that Faulkner now has to win all three rounds consecutively yeah. in order to win this game. So, Faulkner fighting for its life, trying to hang on to get a to get a playoff spot. And so, hopefully, we're able to pull that off here. But uh, it is it is not looking great, but... 
they can definitely do something with this. Like I said, they tend to do really well with Flashpoint. Mm -hmm. So if they can rally and win Flashpoint here and just kind of use that forward momentum to go into probably what would be next is Pushbot and then another control point mission, which is not great. That's one of the reasons I was hoping really hard we would win this one because if we could win this one and then win the next two, we wouldn't have to worry about the uh, second control point match. But nonetheless... Still, Faulkner with a fairly strong showing, just coming up a little bit short there at the end. Going to have to get tough and be able to win this next round if they want to stay in this. You can see him kind of coming up with a strategy here as well. You can tell Trey the, the gears are turning right there. He's coming up with something. And here we go. So it looks like this is going to be a flashpoint. Not the uh, Flash comic book, in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, not that. Although it was a fantastic story. Oh, yeah. Flashpoint is one of my favorite graphic novels. Not just of Flash, but of all time. Yeah. You know what they say. Seasons don't fear the... Don't. Just don't. That may be my favorite voice line I've ever heard in yeah, Overwatch. Yeah, I, I like that interaction a lot. And I love how Reaper interacts, uh, uh, reacts to it just in time so they don't have to worry about copyright infringement. Yeah. <laughs> Where do the wind, the summer, the rain... Oh, there they go. So we're going to take just center entrance, and that's how we're going to push in, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like Reaper's actually going to slip around to the back with support of a Tracer, so a very sneaky team combo to be able to do some damage. There we go. So Reaper's really good for that Bastion. Uh -huh. He just... Bastion's so big, and Reaper does more damage based on how many of his bullets hit. So I've noticed this team really likes to use immortality fields, discords, uh, turrets, that kind of thing. Things that take the other team's focus of fire away from the characters themselves. Yeah. Alright, so Tom very wisely retreating as Doomfist there, able to restore his HP. He was down to like 10. You cannot escape me. Area denied. Reforming. All right, Faulkner able to take some ground on Flashpoint, but getting stalled out here a little bit and getting pushed off of point entirely. Gonna have to get on point quick, guys. Oh, and window goes up. That's not good. Oh, that's our window. Oh, is that our window? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Bastion old. Yeah, okay, that's their window. I knew they had a Baptiste. I just didn't think to account for the color. Ooh. And we are in overtime. We're still hanging on. Who's on point? No, nobody. nobody. Hey, nope. So I think Thomas was on point, but yeah. then they got him. Yeah, I noticed it wasn't moving, but yeah. All right. So unfortunately, the way that we died and the timing of it means that probably they're going to have just as much chance to get to Flashpoint as we do. So unfortunately, that does cost us the advantage we would have of migrating to the next Flashpoint first. But we'll see how that works. We were taking a couple of cheap shots through the doors. Uh oh. Tom goes down, and with no tank, we're in trouble. So he's got ult now. 
I think he's going to save that for when he can actually get on point. Yeah, I think so too. I wouldn't waste it right now. No, and also when he has his entire team with him. Right. Honestly, Reaper just using him as a diversion to spread the team out as far as they can from Flashpoint is not a bad idea, but they kind of give up the chase and head back, which is a smart play on their part. Don't want to get too hasty, especially when you're ahead. So he's pulling a full flank coming all the way around to the back. Oh, and Reaper all uh, gets three. So he's able to take out their Bastion, their Baptiste, and the Emor field. Oh, yeah. I think he, if the Emor field hadn't been thrown down, he would have been able to take another one. But... Probably so. Yeah, unfortunately, that one doesn't go exactly our way. Great Reaper ult, but unfortunately doesn't translate into any ground gained. And they're probably not going to go for this one, I don't think. Well, maybe I'm wrong. No, they, they are able to take it, so they're going to go for next next flash point. I think Ian's just trying to get... Well, I think he was just trying to get charge. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think he was actually trying to contest. All right, Doomfist playing the peak game. So that's uh, opposing Kirill. Tom and Chiaki kind of stuck back here, gonna make a push for ult. Remember, this is match point, so they cannot lose this point. And Faulkner takes point. And the rest of their team should be joining them just in time for the next team fight. And here we are, we're back in the action again. Is that a junk rat shot that I saw? I didn't see it. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm seeing things. Alright, so they're able to take out Chiaki and Tom and, and Viva now. Not good. It's we'll back. have to jump in now if we want to take it. Come on, guys. So you can do it. They there he goes. He's able to take out their Baptiste. Come on, guys. Uh-oh. Beavis down. And down goes Doomfist, and that's going to be game. Whoo. Boy, that was a uh, that was a tough one. Yeah. A hologram again, getting the play of the game. Wow, this time is ba uh, Bastion. Well, wow. and then gets Viva at the tail end of it for the win. Man, yeah, uh, Arkansas just. Uh, really playing very well and Faulkner did have a good showing several points where it looked like Faulkner was going to be able to get one up on them but mm -hmm. they just kind of like every time Arkansas had an answer 
and that's a tough thing to deal with, but unfortunately that means that Arkansas does win this one by a score of 3 nothing. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break here, and we'll be back for the postgame show. College, law school, this is a formative time for people, but it's not just about getting a degree. And I think when students come to school here, when people work here, that's what they get to see. The folks here will love you, take care of you, look out for you, and along the way, help you get a great education. I love that. I would tell students who are interested in potentially going to law school that they can learn the law anywhere but not every learning environment is the same. So I think it's important for them to consider where they can go and be uh, comfortable, where they can go and be encouraged, where they can go and be loved. And that's what they'll find here. There are larger schools, there are schools with bigger names, but there aren't schools with bigger hearts than Faulkner's Law School. We love our students. We don't apologize for that. We don't hide that. And they're not going to find that everywhere, but they can definitely find that here. My name is Mike Carriage, and I teach computer science at Faulkner. Computer science at Faulkner is dramatically changing right now. It's an exciting time to be here. We're adding new students, which is exciting for all of us, but we're also growing in the content in which we deliver. We're adding new courses, we're adding new curriculums. It's a time that things seem to be really exciting and things seem to be really changing rapidly inside of our field. Computer science will always be a rapidly evolving field. Everything from artificial intelligence to cybersecurity will always drive us to excellence. But here at Falcon, we embrace that change as opposed to ignore it. Many of our students find their niche in the computer science world by coming here, and that's what we hope to, to really drive the love of computer science into our students here. I'm telling you, of any place you want to be to learn computer science, Faulkner is the place to be right now. Earn your online Master's of Science and Management from Faulkner in one year. With a focus on HR management, leadership and ethics, and strategic management, you'll gain the skills to succeed. Apply today at faulkner.edu. And welcome back, folks. Thanks so much for being with us here on the post-game show. And we are coming off of a loss against the University of Arkansas Fayetteville. So we are here with Chiaki, Peyton Provo. Thank you so much for being with us, Peyton. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you what, you know, you didn't... You didn't really want to see the kind of results that we saw today, but uh, one thing that was encouraging is this was the number two team in our league, and we, you know, I thought put up a pretty good showing against them, especially in that second round. It seemed like our ults were very coordinated, and we were able to push that payload almost all the way to the end. So talk to us a little bit about what contributed to the uh, team's success in that escort mission. Um, I think a lot of it was our communication and um, being able to strategize against them and talk through what our problems were. So you were just able to kind of have conversations about uh, what you were seeing that maybe needed to be adjusted by the other teammates, yes. and then they were able to kind of do the same for you? Yes. Yeah. Well, I know that's a unique position to be in with support because normally you're like in the back and you can see everybody on your screen. Mm -hmm. uh, as a tank, sometimes that's the disadvantage is that you're kind of in front. You don't really know what's going on behind yeah. you. Uh, so, yeah, it's good to, to good to get that perspective from you. So another thing that I noticed, too, in the Flashpoint game, it seemed like we were able to take point. But uh, whenever we would do something to get a team wipe and get on point, it seemed like they always had an answer. And so what was that they were doing that were causing problems for y'all in the uh in the flashpoint round um i think a lot of that was um they were separating off our tank mm -hmm. and when they do that we can't heal them and he just got shredded and without a tank um our team really crumbles 
Yeah, I did notice that was happening often because in the previous rounds, it seemed like you or your fellow support tended to be the first one to go down. But in the last round, it seemed like Tom was always the one going down first. Yeah. And once that happens, there's just not a whole lot you can do. Um, but, I mean, going forward, you guys have one game left, still have a, a chance uh, mathematically to make it into the playoffs. What are you guys going to do to get uh, you know psyched up for the game tomorrow night? Is there anything you're going to do between now and then to try to get ready for that? Um, I think just practice more, but and um, study the patch notes that came out yesterday. Yeah, that's one thing I meant to ask about as well. We were reading the patch notes while we were waiting for everything to get set up. So what exactly, were there anything that you noticed that was affected by the patch that was affecting tonight's match? Um, Not really. It wasn't as like a big of a patch, but I mm -hmm. did notice that... Um, most of the patch updates were towards buffing tanks, and um, that could have been why their tank lasted so much longer than ours. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed we mirrored a lot of tanks tonight. We yeah. had uh, dual Ramantras, and then we had um, uh, dual Sigmas, so it seemed like we were actually mirroring their tanks quite a bit as well, or they were mirroring ours. I don't know what order it was coming in, but... Uh, but yeah, so, well, appreciate that insight as always. And, uh, that was of course, Shiaki, Peyton Provo, and we'll look forward to seeing what you guys were able to do tomorrow night. Let's finish strong, try to get a W for that last game tomorrow night. Yep. All right. And speaking of that, tomorrow night is going to be the final game of the Overwatch regular season. There is a possibility if we're able to win tomorrow night that we could get in. Uh, it's it's mathematically unlikely, but depending on how the other games go next week, uh, it is possible that we could secure a playoff spot. So just go ahead and let you know about that. That next broadcast is going to be at 9 p.m. tomorrow. And that's going to be, I know that that's a weird time, but uh, it was the only time that we could reschedule. So tomorrow, Wednesday night at 9 p.m. is going to be a late one, but we're going to be here bringing you all of that action. And that is going to be uh, against, um, oh, my notes are actually incomplete here. Who is that one going to be against? Let's take a look at that real quick. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, it looks like we're going to be playing... Uh, University of North Georgia. So it's going to be Eagles versus Nighthawks tomorrow night at 9 p.m. So be sure to check that out. And our next broadcast, normally we would just go ahead and tell you what that's going to be right now, but I can't because we actually don't know. Uh, I know that that's a weird situation to be in, but what's going on right now, well, actually, we may have an update on that. Uh, yeah, it looks like we do. Um, so Coach Cobb, who is the coach over at ASU, has elected to play on Friday. So we will actually not be having a match this evening. We have a match that is going to take place uh, Friday. I'm not sure exactly what time. We'll have to look at that. And I know that we have a doubleheader here at Counter-Strike. So we won't be broadcasting that because it will be away. But you will have the broadcast for that, and we'll try to post that. I'm sure that uh, Coach Cobb can send us the link to ASU stream as well. So uh, that'll be us versus ASU. So that means our next broadcast actually is an Overwatch game. So <laughs> we'll actually be uh, seeing that one tomorrow night at 9 p.m. So be sure to stick with us to get all of the coverage there. Special thanks to everybody that was helping out with the broadcast tonight. To our producer, Mike Johnson, doing a great job pressing all the right buttons and making us look good on the air. And uh, we also have, of course, my broadcast partner, Connor Hagan, who is doing a great job bringing a little flavor to the production tonight. And, uh, of course, I'm your head coach, Caleb Colquitt, saying so long this evening from Regitar USA High Res Arena. Thank you so much for watching. And until that Overwatch game tomorrow, final game of the season, so don't miss out on that. Uh, we will see you then. Until then, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles!